Okay, so with this clip, we're going to be taking a look at how a firm that is a monopoly or monopolist uh, sets both their quantity and their price in a um, in a market. Now, to do this, I encourage you to uh, download and print out the one-page handout that is uh, listed right next to this um, to this clip. Uh, it's a short-run cost monopoly. And uh, it's good to have that with you as you're going through it. If you need to do that first, why don't you pause this video and then go retrieve it and then start away. Okay, so now what we have is a monopolist. If you recall, a monopolist, of course, is just one seller. That means they're exposed to the entire market. In our graph here, what that means is, is that they see this demand curve, this dark blue curve that you see here. They see the demand curve. If it was just a single cur firm in a competitive market, that single firm wouldn't see the demand curve because they're such a small fish in a big pond that they can make as many items as they want as long as they charge the market price. But in this case, the monopolist sees the whole market and basically is going to be, that's good, they get to uh, see the demand curve and they get to choose a price that's probably going to be higher than a competitive price. But on the other hand, they're not going to be able to set a price that's higher than the demand curve. If, if that's the case, nobody will buy the product. Now, the one other curve that's new here is the marginal revenue curve. And that's this magenta line that you see um, on the graph. The marginal revenue is defined as the increase in total revenue as the result of selling one more good. And if you look at that handout sheet that I asked you to download, you'll see the marginal revenue over on the right hand side. You'll see for instance that if this company wanted to sell just one item, they could charge a hundred bucks and they would get a total revenue of a hundred dollars for it. If however they decided that they wanted to sell two items, then the only way they can sell two items is by reducing their price down to ninety dollars. So that's two times ninety, that gives them a total revenue of a hundred and eighty dollars. And that means that their total revenue, going from one selling one item to selling two items, their total revenue has gone from 100 to 180. That means the marginal revenue is 80, and that's why this line is lower. Now, in order to find the optimum level of output for this monopolist, we do the same thing as we did in with a competitive firm. What we want to do is find where marginal cost crosses marginal revenue. The marginal revenue in the competitive firm was just the price line, but here it's a downward sloping line as you see the, this magenta line. So the best place for a monopolist to be is right here where these two things cross, uh, where marginal cost and marginal revenue equal each other. To the left, it makes if you're somewhere to the left, it makes sense to keep producing and increasing your output because the additional revenue you get is going to be greater than the additional cost of making another item. You don't want to be here to the right of the crossover point because then the additional cost of making an item is greater than the additional revenue you get. So the dividing line is right here at this point and I'm going to draw a line from here down to the axis here and see how I've labeled it Q star. That's the, just like with the um, competitive firm, this is the level of output, uh, Q star is the level of output which will maximize profits or in some cases minimize losses but it's the best place to be. Now in this case, uh, because it's a monopolist and they have a chance to set the price, we have to figure out what's the best price to charge. Well, the answer to that is, is that we want to charge a price that will sell exactly Q star number of items. Q star is the best number of items to sell, so what price would that be? Well, what we do is we just follow that Q star up and see where it hits the demand curve and it's going to be roughly here. So we just go up to the demand curve and then from there we go over to the price uh, axis. So right here where I have it labeled P star, that price based on the demand curve, that price will sell exactly Q star items and Q star is how many items we want to sell. So that's how a monopolist first chooses a quantity and then chooses a price. The last step, and this step is just like uh, the step that we would have used for short-term um,
competitive firms is that we want to compare this price to the average cost. Now I don't have an average cost curve drawn on here that was getting a little complicated but what you would do is you would look at the price and compare it to the average cost curve at Q star just to make sure that the price is less than the cost I mean more than the cost excuse me that make sure the price is more than the cost and if that's the case then that means you are making a profit um, and this just re-emphasizes that while you are a monopolist and you get to choose your own price you can't choose a price that's higher than the demand curve if you chose a price way up here at 120 bucks or something like that nobody would want to buy it so even though you have a corner on the market you still have to respond to the interest of the, your consumers